Hello and welcome to another edition of Intelligent Wrestling Talk with your host, the Nerd Man. <clears throat> I'd like to start this episode uh, with a quote from a great uh, philosopher uh, named Aristotle that really applies to the figure I will you know, be discussing today. Um, he said, there is only one way to avoid criticism. Do nothing, say nothing, and be nothing. So true. To the figure um, who is COO of WWE, husband to the all-powerful daughter of the wrestling empire, Stephanie McMahon, lucky sometimes, right place others, a talented individual who's done great good, but also cost the business so much. As our Aristotle's quote suggests, it is, it is um, sometimes unfair to criticize a man who, no matter what he does, um, is destined to incur uh, the wrath of so many, um, especially if they're destined out of some greatness. And that really applies to uh, Triple H, who, no matter what he did, the second he became part of the McMahon family and main event simultaneously, um, would always have incurred our wrath. So the question I set out to the answer is, um, is this criticism fair? This is the trial of wrestling fan favorite bastard child, Triple H. Now, we all know he's assumed the moniker of um, Triple H, the cerebral assassin, the king of kings. We all know, according to him, he's that damn good, why he's the game. And to a whole generation of younger fans, um, he requests that they all bow down to the bow down to the king. To me, however, Triple H's smooth veneer and storybook career is something I don't really buy into. Given his clear lack of ever being that over, it tells me something about the man. Triple H is really the character assassin the prince of paupers, a mere C-plus player. He's that damn insecure. And if anything, we ought to all bow down to the... bow down to the myth. Behold the king. The king of kings. On your knees. on watching live, but I have no viewers at the moment, know that I am going to edit this, um, but this is going to be a long one, because I'm going through a lot of the material, just to warn you. Now, I don't say bow down to the myth lightly. I mean it. This guy is the most impressive political player the wrestling industry has ever seen. So impressive, in fact, that one who's seen his career from his mild beginnings as terrorizing or the blue blood hunter Helst Helmsley, all the way to the most undefeated heel in the history of wrestling, and the one who has now been given the keys to the kingdom, has to stand back, one has to stand back in awe looking at this progression, 
admiring the complete set of nonsense and mistruths he promotes about the importance uh, about his own importance to the industry, especially amongst youths who don't know any better. Um, before Cena and even before Vince McMahon, Triple H is the number one evil in this industry. And I always lament the fact that Cena is so held up, um, you know, as this villain, and Triple H is largely ignored or given a pass simply for being part of the Attitude Era. Look, I have no vendetta against this cat. I truly don't. However, with one who is a global perspective on this guy's career, watching him from WCW, and I did, I watched him all the way from WCW, um, all the way to his intro in the WWE, it seems clear to me that Triple H has pulled off the most masterful coup in wrestling history. So let's go into it. There is a pretty big percentage of fans who have a problem with Triple H. The percentage of fans who have a problem with wrestlers who have similar co accomplishments is a lot less. You don't see 30 to 40 percent of fans posting about how bad a worker Randy Savage was or how Chris Jericho couldn't deliver a promo. You don't see a mixed reaction about Shawn Michaels. We accept he played politics. We know he did. But nonetheless, uh, we can't deny he was one of the most talented in-ring competitors um, to ever grace uh, uh, the squared circle. Even though a lot of fans despise, say, someone like Hulk Hogan for his politics, Still, an overwhelming amount of those who lived through the Hulkamania years either cannot deny his importance to the business, enjoyed his wrestling career, or respect his legacy. Triple H, however, stands out like a sore thumb in terms of how controversial a figure he is to the wrestling community, especially those old enough to remember his contribution and time at the top. Now, I will be the first to admit, and this is true, that some Triple H haters take it way too far. The conspiracy theory about him marrying Stephanie to get to the top is nonsense. That he never would have been a main event player uh, without her is nonsense. He clearly would have been. He clearly would have been and he clearly would have made it um, whether or not he married Stephanie. No, he didn't marry Stephanie to further his career. Their love is obviously uh, something that is real to them, and uh, not some ingenious, grand, maniacal plan on his part to take over the wrestling industry. I, I really don't give him or anyone, um, for that matter, uh, such credit um, or foresight. I think they fell in love genuinely, and I, you know, uh, is also, you know, I don't hold that against him. I think it's silly one to sit there and judge a man for even marrying such a beautiful woman, you know, that even I had the hot for when I was growing up, more than any of the other divas. Um, or even using his connection in the family uh, uh, to make himself a Hall of Fame career. I can't blame him for that. You? Uh, I mean, where I can't, uh, you know, if, if you marry into a powerful family, you're going to take advantage of it to some extent, and no one can be blamed for that. Where I can't stand this man is for his manipulations to keep himself on top through the love of his wife and the love of a father for his um, little girl. I can't stand his use of this same relationship to undermine talent he feels threatened by, specifically younger talent who were more entertaining and were good for business, which I will go into later. And I can't stand his use of this relationship to elevate his buddies and those he personally deems worthy to the top of the business when in fact the most of them are untalented hacks, um, a little like himself. And most of all, I cannot stand him using the WWE corporate machine as his own personal ego stroker so he can rewrite history to make himself appear uh, as if he were this generation's version of Ric Flair. I am sorry, you're not me. So let's get into this. 
crazy booking and undeserved pushes. We look at, um, let's get this out of the way first. Triple H won the title once before dating Stephanie. The, that is the WWE title that we can be sure of. Three times before marrying Stephanie, and we all know how many since. Okay, now in my mind, I'm sure Triple H was skiing Stephanie secretly near the end of his time with China in '99, and before the Stephanie um, McMahon, oh sorry, the McMahon Helmsley angle um, started taking place on TV in um, December of '99. It has always been my firm conviction that is um, that um, it is put out by the WWE corporate machine that they weren't dating um, when this angle began so as to protect Triple H's image. I mean, why would they just come up with Triple H dating Stephanie McMahon out of nowhere? I just don't believe it. It doesn't ring, ring true to me. The reason she was in an angle with, um, uh, with her former lover, who was Tess, whose career went nowhere after they stopped dating, was because she was dating him in real life. To me, Triple H should have been Sean's lackey and nothing more. There was nothing about the guy that intrigued me personally. WWE was in bad shape, Sean left, Triple H was in the right place at the right time, and then enter Stephanie. There is no myth when it comes to why Triple H became successful and then held others down. If you were to marry your boss or your, bo uh, your boss's daughter, then in life you would climb the ladder. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Marrying into the company proves your loyalty. It means you're invested for life and you'll be rewarded for life unless you fuck up. Triple H got to reach the top because of his entrance into the McMahon family. Shane and Stephanie would never have made it onto TV if they weren't Vince's kids. Neither would Linda. If Vince wasn't Vince, he wouldn't have won the world title, main evented WrestleMania with Hulk Hogan, Michaels and Hart, etc. Triple H... Um, his family, and by default got to have almost as many world titles as Ric Flair. Sure, Trips could have won a few on his own. But there is a huge job security and ladder climbing that comes with partnering up with Stephanie and becoming a McMahon family friend beyond business. Even Santino Morello would have climbed the ladder of success had he been that lucky guy. It's not cliche to say Triple H got what he got by getting with Stephanie. To think otherwise is closing your eyes to reality. Um, bottom line, Trips without Stephanie and Sean isn't a 13-time world champion or, or 16, or, or, no, he's 13-time world champion who main events for 13 years. Without them, he doesn't main event all those WrestleManias he had no business main eventing, whether he lost or not. The guy lost or, you know, or whether he buried people or not. The guy lost some of his WrestleMania matches, sure, but the other 364 days a year he rarely lost and was booked more powerfully than any guy on the card. The guy was booked like Diesel during his world title run, or the way Hogan was booked in 89-90, the way Goldberg was in WCW. Triple H was pushed as an undefeatable monster and he didn't look like one. It was like the guy just kept getting pushes every time he'd come back from injury. Stone Cold or Rock or whoever would just end up coming back and feuding for a bit before a title run, not Triple H. He'd return at the Royal Rumble or on Raw and challenge uh, for the world title and win it. Then he'd lose it two weeks later, only to win it again at the next pay-per-view. I'm all for guys looking strong and not jobbing. Uh, I'm all for like the old guys, the old guard, um, you know, the Attitude Era guys or the guys um, from eras before, looking strong and not jobbing. Although the IWC seems to cry whenever the young guys uh, have to lose, 
But Triple H has always been the exception. He's the one old guy who goes the limit and never looks weak and almost never gets pinned. His wife oversees all the booking as we, uh, as, uh, as since um, about 2003, his wife has overseen all the booking. Possibly she had influence, obviously, earlier with her father. The bookers book Triple H to be dominant and rarely ever lose in order to keep their jobs and move up the company. Now, you might say, where's my proof? Why should we believe this? Well, let, let's hear some quotes from some people who might know a little bit about it. Say, for instance, Hardcore Holly, who isn't actually that, doesn't actually have, seem to have that bad opinion of Triple H. Let's hear what he had to say. Um, this is a direct quote from his book. He's a great wrestler who knows what to do in the ring. I recently watched one of my matches against him from back in the Attitude Era, and it reminded me of just how good he is. He was always very gracious to me in ring, very unselfish, and that's because he understands how wrestling works. But he bases too many of his backstage decisions on how he feels about somebody. Vince bases his decisions on how much money he could make from a person or a situation. That's the difference. He always buried Jericho. He nearly got him fired. And remember, he's saying this. Sorry, I'm going to continue the quote, or I'll reread it. He said this before Jericho, before um, Triple H came out to call, um, you know, Jericho uh, a C plus or B plus player. I'm not sure which one. So, um, you know, he came out and said this, uh, hardcore Holly, way before any of that happened. So. Um, you know, this is just something he happened to write in his book randomly years before. He always buried Jericho. He nearly got him fired. So many guys could have been a lot more than they ended up being. Kane, Booker, RVD, all buried by Hunter. Rob Van Dam could have been huge. CM Punk is one of the top guys now, but he could have been the guy, even though Hunter never liked him. They had no choice but to go with Punk because he got over. You'll notice that Hunter made sure to go over on him, though, to make sure everybody knew Punk wasn't on Hunter's level. Where's the sense in that? It's, it, just looked, it just took away Punk's momentum when he was the hottest thing going. Punk could have made so much more money for the business if Hunter had the balls to put him over. We've got another thing um, from one of the creative staff talking about Triple H. This is a quote from Matthew Randazel, um, a traumatized uh, writer from Power Slap, uh, who worked for WWE at a certain point. I remember being nervous the first time I delivered the script to the McMahon dressing room where Triple H would dress. He would never use the locker rooms with the rest of the boys. When Triple H answered, I told him the raw script was ready for his review. On the first occasion, he grabbed the script, flipped through it, but did not read it, and asked me point blank, am I fucking going over? This first time that I delivered the script to him, he did indeed win his match, so I said yes. Then he politely gave the script back to me without reading it and said, that's all I needed to know, and walked back into the McMahon locker room. A few months later, when Goritz had another weekend off, I delivered another raw script to him on the pay-per-view Sunday. And it was the same routine. He nonchalantly flipped through it and said, am I fucking going over? This time, however, he was to lose his match via disqualification. He would keep his title. I said to him, well, sort of. Then Hunter froze. He said, what do you fucking mean, sort of? I said, you lose the match via DQ, so you still keep the title. What page, he growled. After I told Hunter the page number this occurred on, he ripped that page out, threw the rest of the script to the floor in a rage, and slammed the door in my face. Needless to say, the next day during the agent's meeting, the script had somehow changed, and now Triple H um, won his match cleanly. 
This was hardly an isolated incident. Pa Patterson, who was forced into early retirement, um, or who uh, was um, went into early retirement in I think 2002, late 2002, um, had this to say um, in a report, which was what came out before his early retirement. Triple H is overpushed as top guy. Um, you know, Triple H is overpushed, and as top guy has not made any new talent other than Chris Benoit into top guys. And even with Benoit, looking at how he has been uh, been pushed since losing the title, um, which is to Randy Orton, uh, obviously Triple H's buddy as a sideline. But um, and even with Benoit, looking at how he has been pushed since losing the title, you can even make a case that he was important, uh, that he was important while he was champion, but much less so now. Then there is the one-month title reign of Randy Orton to consider, which many WWE people have told me they felt was Triple H cutting out Orton's legs from underneath him. Triple H does not need to be pushed as the top guy and certainly doesn't need to dominate Raw the way he does. As the major financial indicators have shown, Raw business, business is definitely slumped right now, and even when he wasn't the champion earlier this year, Triple H was still the most focal point of the show, not to mention very influential in the booking process. So we definitely share some of the blame for Raw's current state. This was um, a quote uh, or a report from um, Pat Patterson, a long-time dedicated um, uh, member of the um, of uh, the WWE Universal uh, Corporation, uh, has been a workhorse for that corporation and one of their top bookers behind some of their top angles and find the founder of some of their top talent, including The Rock. Early retirement probably thanks to that report or is it just another coincidence again of Triple H. Let's hear what um, a legend Stone Cold Steve Austin had to say on Triple H. Triple H's constant references to me taking my ball and going home. You want me to pull an Austin or whatever. Here's a guy who needs to stop worrying about me. I'm not even with the company right now. This was after um, you know, uh, Stone Cold had left because of um, his differences with creative. Um, he then goes on to say, he needs to worry about his own character and drawing big money for the company. So here's the thing. Now, we've got Stone Cold, somebody behind it, um, who, who knows about numbers, surely, uh, talking about Triple H's drawing power. Oh, the business is in a, you know, uh, and he goes on to um, quote Triple H, saying, "Oh, the business is in a down cycle," as his excuse. And he says, "That's very conven convenient." In my view, he's not where he should be with the amount of TV time invested in him. So don't worry about Stone Cold because somewhere along the line. In the transition from being a granite snob to being the toughest guy to ever walk in the ring, who walks down the ramp all jacked up spewing water, I missed it. Okay? So it seems crazy to me when you hear all these testimonials by people who are inside the business, everyone from Stone Cold to Pat Patterson to creative writers, to you know, low-level um, guys like uh, uh, Bob, uh, you know, Holly, hardcore Holly. It seems crazy to me that people seem to not want to accept Triple H's obvious use of politics to make his way to the top of the company. Triple H has been groomed to take over WWE with Stephanie McMahon. Now he was given all he got so uh, that he'd stay with Stephanie. Had he fucked the McMahons over and treated Stephanie like China, his career story would be re-slanted to be looking a lot like the Ultimate Warrior, and they would be making um, the rise and fall of Triple H DVD, uh, where they pay pocket change to old Hall of Famers like um, Ted DiBiase.
to come at, uh, come and say what a douchebag Triple H was. And, you know, to be honest, given um, Triple H's career at that point, he may not have even got a DVD. He may have just been forgotten. I didn't see him as any... Uh, that. He was one chump championship and, a, and, a, and, a, and an intercontinental championship um, more important than, uh, you know, Tess. He may have been a side note on a Shawn Michaels DVD. So, let me go on. By competing in so many mes WrestleMania main events, Triple H is buried superstars. He really wasn't needed in that triple threat match with Benoit, for instance, with Shawn Michaels. He beat Sheamus, but Sheamus had no business being in a high-caliber match with Triple H in the first place. Sheamus was there because he is Triple H's close um, buddy and works out with him. By pushing a guy with average talent that came out of nowhere like Sheamus, Triple H was holding back other guys perhaps more deserving. The CM Punks of the world, for instance. Okay? Um, and a number of other different people who I can't think of, other, the Daniel Bryans, the, um, you know, people who are way more over than Seamus has ever been. Um, Dolph Ziggler, for instance. Okay? His feuds with Randy Orton and Batista, two of his closest friends, didn't hold anyone down. But the thing is, Triple H only wants to push the, his closest friends. Imagine, for instance, let, let's use this scenario. Imagine Hulk Hogan would only lose to Brutus Briefcase and Brian Nobbs and would never let someone like Warrior or Goldberg get clean pins over him. See, that is the kind of business mentality that Triple H has. Hogan wasn't stupid enough to let his friendships get in the way of business the way that Triple H has. He knew those guys couldn't cut it, yet Triple H um, never seemed to get that Batista was a boring big guy and that Sheamus really doesn't have it at all. I mean, Batista isn't the, as, as much of a joke as Sheamus, but Batista is no way face of the company material. He doesn't have the charisma. Undertaker has been used to put over Triple H by wrestling him at three different WrestleManias. Triple H should never have been able to take Undertaker so close to the limit. Of all the wrestlers Taker has fought in past, how is it Triple H, at his age, is the one that gets the closest to ending the streak? There are so many more deserving guys uh, that could uh, gain cred by facing The Undertaker at WrestleMania. But Triple H just needs to be the guy, because in his mind, no one can uh, else can um, do the streak justice. And do remember, the, the closest, the other closest guy to beating the streak was in fact Randy Orton, Triple H's personal groomee um, to take over his position um, in the company in future. A guy, again, who is even more bland than Batista. Um, Triple H rushed back uh, late uh, last summer and completely ruined the CM Punk Kevin Nash angle. The whole focus is, uh, was on Triple H when it should have been on CM Punk. Triple H has never been, uh, and I'll come back to that later, Triple H has never been Hulk Hogan. He's never been The Rock or Austin or Savage or Michael. The guy, um, um, his wife, and the whole booking team they hold hostage cannot push Triple H any further and make us believe he is in the same league. No matter if he wins 26 world titles, no matter how many times they allow him to main event WrestleMania, no matter how many times he gets to take Taker to the limit, Triple H is limited because he doesn't have the charisma or personality to connect to a wide audience. Uh, or should I say the wrestling skills or mic skills um, to connect with as wide an audience as some of the people he's either held down or people like The Rock or Austin or um, you know Hulk Hogan, which he tries to put himself in the same league as. 
and he isn't. Triple H has always thought he was the show, when in reality, WWE Raw, um, when it was at its most successful, was Rock and Austin. In between was Shawn Michaels, and um, is now, you know, sorry, was Hulk, Rock, Rock and Austin, and in between was Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, and now is Cena and Punk. Whether he wins or loses all his matches, the reality is he is not Hulk Hogan, Rock or Austin, etc. So therefore has no business being such a dominant wrestler who never leaves the main event limelight. It is no myth that his lifelong push has held a lot of wrestlers down by only pushing um, his friends, by marrying the boss's daughter and inheriting the ultimate position of authority in the company, by deciding who gets pushed and who doesn't, by main eventing every pay-per-view when uh, you're not even interesting enough to be main eventing for 13 years, by being behind the firing or letting go or uh, go off or demise or the screwing over of a number of more interesting superstars like Bret Hart, Jeff Hardy, RVD, Mick Foley, um, even China, by vetoing any angle that puts anybody, even Sean, in a higher light than himself, this is all holding down the careers of others and holding down ratings and really holding down the history of the WWE just to cater to the ego of one man. I think we've proven Triple H has always been force-fed to a lot of fans. The ratings of the 90s uh, were 5 to 5.5. Now they are 2.5 um, to 3s um, or even less. Um, and when Triple H has been front and center, um, that is usually when ratings have dipped. Um, those who have uh, seen uh, that since the Cena era where Triple H has been most, you know, dominant, basically, people have seen this. Rock and Austin were the reason for those, uh, for the doubled ratings in the late 90s and early 2000s. Um, 2002 is when you see the dip, and that was the year of Triple H. So without Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock, Triple H couldn't draw anything and hasn't been proven to draw anything uh, more than um, the rest, you know, uh, and, and, and basically Triple H's fandom comes from the wrestling, or those who have kept him afloat are the wrestling obsessed who'd be watching even if Jarrett was the one being claimed to be the King of Kings. Um, next, we will talk about um, his burials of younger talent in part two.